Hello everyone, and today we're going to be looking at creating a procedural city in Blender using the inbuilt hair particle system. Uh, so the version of Blender I'm going to be using today is 2.91, and let's go from there. So let's create a new blank canvas project to work in, and always, as always, save. So, first thing we're going to do is create a plane. And on that plane, we're going to add uh, two modifiers. Um, they're both going to be array modifiers. We're going to do one in the X direction. And instead of doing relative offset, we're going to do constant offset. And that's going to mean that if we change the scale of the mesh in edit mode, uh, it keeps the spacing of two meters that we've set out in constant offset. So we're going to duplicate this array and instead of doing it in the x direction we're going to do it in the y direction and we're also going to call this y as well so we can collapse those constant offsets down and we're going to create a big city so let's call this 20 by 20 and that is going to be our blocks in this city and as you can see because we've done a constant offset it means we can shrink this down and we get to see a division between our blocks Right, so let's rename this plane to base mesh small buildings. And we're going to put this in its own collection and we're going to call this collection base meshes. So let's create a particle system. Um, and we're going to make this a hair particle system because that's what we're using. And you can see everything pops in in the last square so what we want uh, what we need to do to make it use the entire region of array geometry is click use modifier stack in the particle settings and you can see we've got all these hairs sticking up and that's going to be the basis for our city uh, we're also going to change the distribution to random and get rid of even distribution now it's currently rendering all our buildings as a path and what we want is to render it as an object we don't have any objects yet, so let's create a simple building. And I'm just going to do a mesh, a cube. There's our simple building. And we're going to call this small building. And we're going to put this in its own collection, and we're going to call that simple geometry. We're just going to move it so it's out of the way of the actual scene we're generating. So let's select the instance object in the particle settings on the base mesh to be this small building and you can see it's kind of in the ground we don't want that we want we want this to be up we want the base of the building to be on the base of the mesh so what we need to do if we go into edit mode and if you go into edit mode you move things relative to the origin so what we're going to do is just go g z one and that just moves it upwards you can still see that that's moved the geometry that way. If we go back into edit mode and just move this up and down on the Z axis, you can see it's moving along the particle plane in the X axis. Now the reason for that is for some reason or another, Blender's particle system uses the X axis of your instance object as the normal axis on your base mesh plane. So to get around this, what we can do, if we select the base mesh and then we click Object Rotation, so it will inherit the rotation of the object that we're instancing. And if we rotate this object around the Y axis, you can see that the buildings write themselves. So if we just put in 90, not 990, but 90, that means that this object, now it's looking along the x-axis, means that when it's instanced along this, the x-axis is aligned with the normal and we get buildings that stand up. So the next thing we're going to do with our base mesh is untick show emitter because we're going to be creating our own roads and base geometry afterwards and we don't want to have to just do something with this geometry to get that to look good. So as you can see, uh, it's not very interesting, it doesn't really make much sense, and it doesn't really have much 
visual interest going across the city. There's no distinct zones. The building is just uniform and randomly spread out, which isn't how normal, uh, which isn't how cities look in real life. So we're going to control how the particles are distributed, and to do that, we're going to create something called an effector, and this type of effector is called a repulsor. So if we go and make a plane, and what we're going to do with this plane is we're going to stretch it out so it covers the whole bottom edge of our base mesh. And we're going to call this Repulsor. And we're going to move this into its own collection called Effectors. Now these names don't really mean anything in the grand scheme of things, but they're just handy ways to know what your objects are doing to the particle system and how they're affecting it. So, to enable this effector or repulsor to control how the buildings are distributed, we're going to need to create a vertex group in this base mesh. So if we go to vertex groups and we create a new vertex group and we're going to call this one building distribution because it controls the distribution of buildings. Um, and if we go into edit mode and while building distribution is selected, we can assign everything in the mesh. Uh, notice that only these four vertices are selected. It's because everything else is arrayed. So if these four vertices are in this vertex group, everything will be because all of those characteristics are replicated across the generated geometry after the array. So the next thing we need to do, if we go into our modifiers again, we're going to add a modifier, and this modifier is going to be a vertex weight proximity modifier. And the important thing to remember is if you want anything to affect the particle settings, is to put that in front of the particle settings. Because if we change this vertex group, and we want that to affect the particle settings, but the particles have already been generated, if, and if they were this way around, that would be the case, then this vertex group isn't going to do anything. So we're going to select our building distribution vertex group in the weight proximity modifier and our target object is going to be our repulsor and in proximity mode we're going to change from object to geometry and instead of vertex we're going to go to face. Now nothing's happened but that's because we haven't told the particle settings to use the vertex group. So if we go to vertex groups and in density we go to building distribution you can see that everything's avoided this zone, this this repulsive zone if you like. Now it's not only that we can control where the buildings don't spawn but we can control the likelihood that they are instanced. So if we go to the modifier panel for the base mesh again and you can see we've got these two uh, sliding bars. We've got the lowest and the highest. So this controls how the uh, vertex weight proximity modifier affects the, uh, the vertex group. So if we increase the highest, we can see that it's, it's extending the effect that the repulsor has on the vertex group and therefore on the density of buildings. So we can also change this lowest and that is like a hard cutoff of how close the buildings can instance next to this repulsor. So let's talk about layers of detail. Um, and when we say layers of detail, what we mean is uh, how, if we add different layers of different features on top of each other, how that creates visual detail. And I'm not going to go too far into it, uh, but there is a really great um, web page on uh, a site by a guy called Neil Blevins, and he goes into how to create visual interest using different types of shapes, uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary shapes. Um, and I'm going to link that down below. But we want to create layers of building types. And for this project, we're going to be creating two more. So this one, this first layer we've got is for small buildings. And we're going to create two more. We're going to create a layer for warehouses and we're going to create a layer for towers. Um, and so for that, we're going to have to create two more buildings. And again, these are going to be really simple buildings. So if we just duplicate 
this small building base mesh, bring it over here. What we're going to do is we're going to scale it up in the side direction and we're also going to bring the height down. So it's kind of like a wide warehouse or a wide block. That so let's call this small warehouse. Actually, not even small, just warehouse. And we're also going to copy the small building again and select the top face. I remember this is the top because the x-axis in particle space is up. And we're going to bring that face upwards. So it's a tower, if you like. And then we're going to scale it uh, and just make it a little bit wider. It's a bit chunkier than the smaller buildings we've got. So those, those are our three building types. And they don't look that interesting just on their own. But what we're going to do with those is create their own base meshes so that we can control the distribution of the warehouses and the towers individually. Uh, let me just rename the tower as well just so we know what it is. So that's the tower. So what we can do is we're going to copy the base mesh for the small buildings. And we're going to rename it so we know what it is. And we're going to call it warehouses. And in the particle settings one thing to remember is if you want to create a new particle system is just to click this button. Otherwise, if you change any of these settings, it will change the settings for whatever you copied it from. So let's bring the number down of buildings because we want there to be a few less warehouses. And we're also going to change the instance object to warehouse. Now you can see we've got a little bit more variety in the buildings we've got, but it's still, it's still not quite there. So let's Let's duplicate that warehouse mesh and we're going to use that create to create the towers mesh, base mesh. And once again, make sure that you create a new particle settings system and then change, bring that number down to about 100 because there's really only going to be a few of these in the city. And for the instance object, we're going to go for tower. And see those have dropped in. So now we've got three types of meshes which are all emitting their own type of building object. However they're all interacting in the same way with this repulsor and they've, they're all using the same proximity, weight proximity modifier as all the other ones. So we're not getting too much variation here. So what we're going to do is in the base mesh for the warehouses I tend to think that warehouses are going to be more towards the outskirts of the city than say small buildings and apartment blocks so I'm going to bring this highest level down and you can see they're sort of creeping out to the outskirts of the city yeah I think that's going to be good and I'm also going to bring down the lowest to zero just so there's a there's a chance of them going really close here now you can see we because we've only got one low point if you like that everything follows the same direction we want to add a little bit more variety in the directions of of flow and height in the city you can see here that it it just sort of tapers down it's like this end is busy and this end is the countryside but we can do better than that so with the tower blocks, what we're going to do is we're going to create a city centre that all the buildings are clustered around. And to do that, we're going to copy this repulsor mesh that we've got, and we're going to call this a tractor. And I'm going to give you three guesses of what this will do. So if we go to our tower block mesh, and in the modifiers, if we change the target object to a tractor and then in our particle properties we go down to our density and our vertex group settings and we click this button here this will invert how the vertex group affects the distribution of particles so the buildings are attracted to the attractor uh, congratulations if you got that one right so we can change the shape of this And all right, also, as you can see, it, what, when we change around the repulsors and the attractors, 
things that affect the uh, weight proximity modifiers, everything doesn't update automatically sometimes. So the easiest way to get around that I find is just to select everything in the project, press A, and then press G as if you were going to move it around, and then just press escape. And that jogs the memory, if you like, of uh, Blender to say, oh yeah, no, I need to, I need to update things. Um, so let's select our attractor again, and we're gonna we're gonna just scale this up a little bit. Just apply that scale, and in the tower particle settings, oh no, sorry, not the particle settings. In the modifier settings, we're gonna take this down to zero, and we're gonna take this highest value. We can see how that changes there, and we're gonna we can change that to about twelve. Actually, even less. We can change that even lower and we're also going to take this down to about 50. So now we've got some visual interest. You can see we are decreasing the density of the city as we get out here. That's like going out to the suburbs. And then you've got the business district in the center here. So to add even more variety in these buildings, what we're going to do is add a little bit of randomness in the scale of the particles as they're dropped in. So if we select our small buildings base mesh, what we're going to do is underneath the render tab of the particle settings, we're going to go to scale randomness. I'm just going to add a little bit. We're going to add 0.1 into the scale randomness there. And that just adds a little bit of variety. See, they're, they're kind of different heights and different sizes. Just, just gives a little bit more visual interest. Now, if we select the warehouses, I like to put these up to about 0.8 because I want lots of different shapes. Towers, again, we're gonna set this randomness to about 0.2, just so they're a little bit different. Okay, so we've got some variety in the overall strategy and scheme of the of the layout. But what we wanna do is, is, is bring back that detail and that difference between these blocks, because these blocks don't really mean anything at the moment. Uh, you can't really see, there's no like defined road lines. I mean, this tower is, you know, it's, it's dropped in the middle of the road. I, I don't think the city planners will be too happy with that. So what, what we're gonna do is individually alter the base meshes so we can have a really a nice amount of fine control on where the buildings actually uh, pop in. So if we select the base mesh for the small buildings and we go into edit mode, you can see we can just change the scale of this. And if we change the scale down and drop out of edit mode, you can see that all the small buildings, they now only just pop in in this really small region uh, because we've told it to. And that gives us a lot of control. So instead of doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to inset this plane and we're going to delete the central face. So now if I select all the geometry in the plane, we've got this strip around the edge which is what is going to host all the particles, if you like. So if I then drop out of edit mode. So I've pumped the number of particles in the small building base mesh up to 5,000. And that's gonna, because this is quite a big city, we're gonna need that amount just to see the shapes that we've got in the blocks. So as you can see, they're, they're also still spawning in the middle of the road. So if we go into edit mode and make sure everything's selected, we can scale that down, drop out of edit mode, and you can see again that we've got some nice division now. We can act, we've actually got like a little bit of a street and a bit more block shape. Now we're going to repeat this process with the warehouses. So if I select the warehouse mesh, and you can select a emission mesh by just click clicking any of the emitted particles and it'll select their parent mesh. So if we go into edit mode here, we can scale this down. Now we're not going to inset and delete any faces, but we're just going to bring that in. So they only, they only in, instance in the center of where the small buildings are. And that's going to give the effect. Like if we look, if we just take a, a one, for example, I don't know, say this one, you know, if, if you take this as a block, You've got a shared car park, or this could be the back end of a, of a grocery store or something like that, or a shopping market, um, or an indoor tennis court. And then 
in this area here this could be a public park or basketball court something like that we're also going to up the number as well we're going to create that crank that up to 2000 so now you can see that effect even more so now we've just got a little courtyard here you know you might it might be a public square there might be a fountain there use your imagination So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change how the buildings uh, spawn in. So if we go into edit mode after selecting the towers base mesh, and then we inset, we're going to do the same thing we did with the small buildings, except we're going to scale it down so it's inside the small building layer. And that's just going to give a little bit of an offset from street level. So you've got the street, then you've got the small buildings and then slightly back from that you've got the larger tower blocks and you've got the larger ones that are distributed there. We can actually make the small buildings go a little bit further out into the street. So, so what I'm going to do is just go back into that base mesh and just scale that up a little bit. And this is the beauty of this system because nothing's permanent. You can just make these little changes as and when you like you just you know you have a look around mm, not too sure about that i want the towers to be a bit close to the edge of the road just go back go into edit mode just scale it up and down until you've got something that you're happy with so the next thing to do is we want to create some roads because in all our particle settings we've unticked show emitter none of, none of this base geometry is going to be visible so we need to create something that actually has a base on it otherwise we're just going to have a load of buildings floating in the air which you know, is cool but it's not realistic so instead of creating another arrayed plane we can just copy one of the base meshes and just get rid of the particle system get rid of the proximity modifier and just keep these two x and y arrays now if we go into edit mode and delete everything in the mesh and while we're still in edit mode just create a plane so now we've got something that we can build off and what I'm going to do just really simply come in with an inset and then extrude that upwards and that's going to give us a road and then like a little curb edge just to add a little bit more complexity and to make it a little bit more realistic what we're going to do is we're going to cur we're going to bevel off these edges so we've got a kind of smooth intersection for all the crossroads so to select all these edges rather than select them individually just select one of them and just go control G or shift G and select a similar direction and we're going to go control B to bevel that and using the mouse wheel just increase the segments in that bevel so now we've got a nice smooth bevel which if you look at any of the crossroads is a very nice little bevel if you wanted to render this now I would recommend in the your list of bits and bobs here is get the render check mark up and disable in renders for the effectors and also disable in viewport as well and that will mean that if you go into the render at the moment, oh, that's very bright. Let's turn that down. This is just using a default sky texture in cycles. So now you can see I've got something quite nice. Now, for the attractor and the repulsor, I've used something very simple. I've used a plane that's long here and I've used a plane that's square but big here. But you can change around how these work. So if I do some loop cuts down here, bring that down and then turn on proportional editing lock it to the x-axis and increase the sphere of influence we can have like oh and then 
reset our particle system by selecting everything, pressing G and then pressing escape, we can have a, an area of effect that kind of expands outwards. So I don't know what's going to go in here. Is it a coastline? Is it a park? Is it a bomb site? It's, it's all up to you. Is this actually a ruined city? In which case, you know, you could cut the top off some of these buildings and do that. If we go back into rendered view, it just gives us a nice, again, just some more visual interest rather than just having something uniform going across the city. Now, for me, I think this is actually too many small buildings. So what I'm going to do is, in the particle settings, pop that down to 4,000 from 5,000. And in the warehouses, that's going to go up to 2,500. And also what I'm going to do, if we go back into solid view so I can see what I'm doing, is I'm going to shorten, leave. I'm also going to shorten them after turning off proportional editing. So I think that'll look a bit better. And maybe, just maybe, We'll add in a little bit more randomness. We'll bring that up to 0.2. And with this, I think I'm going to bring this up to 0.4. So we go into rendered view. We've created a procedural blocked out city. So that's, the, that's it for this part of the tutorial. And I just wanted to split this video into two because I want to show you the theory of creating the, the, the particle distribution system first uh, because it's its own technique. And then in the next video, we're going to be looking at bringing in some more complex geometry and adding a, a level of realism to this. Um, and we're also going to be creating a procedural material to uh, shade the particles so that we can add some more random variety rather than it being this nice but boring uh, just plain white colour. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've learned something. Um, and look, this is a learning experience for everyone. So in the comments below, if, you, if you've got any tips or, or tricks you want to share, just, just drop them in. Um, and my contact information is in the description below. So if you've got any feedback, I'd be happy to hear it. And thank you very much.